This is the most consequential video. You would have seen about how to package and ship orders as a complete beginner. It doesn't matter whether you're selling offline or online. You want to watch this video till the end to really understand everything about product packaging and shipping. So let's first talk about packaging. So how do you package products? Well, knowing how to protect items when shipping requires thorough knowledge of product packaging, right? So it involves designing and producing a visually appealing and protective container for your products. And uh, when we talk about the production uh, of a protective container, we have three important parts. You have the product packaging, you have the outer packaging, and then you have the inner packaging. What is the product packaging? So the product packaging encompasses the product itself and it's usually branded. For example, if your product is perfume, so the glass bottle with the branded label is the product packaging, okay? And then you have the, the outer packaging. So this is actually the, uh, the layer that protects the product during shipment. So it's often a rectangular cardboard box, flat shipping envelope or mailer bag. So that's the second element. The third element is the inner packaging. So this is everything that goes inside the outer packaging. So you might ship a bundle of three perfumes in a decorative box branded to your company. The internal packaging also includes, by the way, the, the uh, inner packaging is also called the internal packaging. This also includes the package, the, the, the packing materials, whether shredded paper, packing peanuts, or bubble wrap, okay? If you ship a business card or promotional coupon with the order, that's also part of the inner packaging. So before you package your products, it's essential that you evaluate them on three characteristics. There are three things you really, you really need to assess them on. You have the weight, you have the size and shape, and you have the value and fragility. Weight, size and shape, and value and fragility. So weight, you will need packaging strong enough to hold whatever is inside. So heavier items often need multi-layered corrug corrugation, while light items can ship in bags. That's for the weight. For the size and shape, when packaging any products, the edges should not touch the outer packaging, so you want to consider your product's size and shape and choose a box or mailer that is large enough for both the products and cushioning material. So think about that. Let's talk about the value and fragility. Well, now the thing is, this makes sense. Valuables and breakables need extra protection in transit. So the box should also have a label that says fragile and possibly an arrow pointing, pointing out which way to stow and handle the container. So those are really important because remember, your shipment will be handled by a lot of, a lot of hands while in transit. So you wanna make sure that you have clear instructions for those hands, very important. Let's talk about how to package small to medium sized products. By the way, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. We're having a quick convo about how to package and ship orders for complete e-commerce beginners, okay? It, it can also, this tutorial also applies to uh, non-e-commerce. Like if you're selling offline, you can also use this tutorial also. So let's talk about how to do that. So how do you choose your packaging type? So the thing is your package may pass through many different hands and pieces of equipment in route to its final destination destination so it's therefore crucial to select the packaging material that will protect your products and hold up during transport right so for small products you typically have three options only three you have corrugated cardboard boxes so cardboard is sturdy and lightweight meaning it can really protect your products without adding to your shipping weight and out of the, the all the products that get shipped 90% are packed in cardboard because it is considered safe. So go with cardboard. It's always a winner. And also think about padded mailers. So padded mailers are generally for small, flat, or delicate items. So they are excellent for jewelry, handmade items, books, uh, and uh, electronics. So they come with some built-in padding, which you can add to some recycled paper or bubble wrap. So th then you have the third category. You have uh, shipping bags or envelopes. So a polyurethane, urethane, polyurethane bag or plastic envelope is strong and lightweight, okay? They are also self-sealing, which can streamline packaging operations. So like mailers, they are best for smaller items. We're talking about how to package small to medium-sized items. They are important. So the first thing is you need to choose your packaging type. So corrugated cardboard boxes, padded mailer or shipping bags or envelopes. 
Number two, you need to decide whether to customize. So if you are, if, if branding is important for you, if you want to differentiate yourself, then you want to actually stand out, then you, you need to think about whether or not you want to customize. The thing is that with customization, there are costs involved. And you gotta ask yourself, what about the fulfillment? Are you going to do the, are you going to do the customization yourself? Or is your, your, uh, order fulfill, your order fulfillment company going to do it for you? So those are really things, things you need to think about. And those have consequences in terms of branding, but also in terms of uh, how you actually uh, pr present yourself. The third thing you need to do is to add protective filler. Okay, so when your products need to hold up during shipping, you need to know how to pack boxes for shipping with the appropriate type and amount of padding. So what we've seen is that the protective cushioning is crucial in protecting, let's say, uh, your small items during shipping. So what you want to do is you want to wrap each item separately so they will not bump into one another inside the box. Okay, and if the product is susceptible to moisture or dirt, put it inside a plastic bag for protection. You want to use at least two inches of cushioning around each every side and leave no empty space within the container and at the same time you want to avoid overstuffing it okay because what will happen here is that if you add too much filler you could actually cause the box or bag to burst during shipping which you don't want anyway right so you can choose from both traditional and eco-friendly package fillers including tissue paper foam or corn starch packing product uh, packing peanuts cardboard inserts, crumpled crinkle cut or shredded paper, polyurethane foam inserts, air pillars, or bubble wrap. Then next thing you wanna do, you wanna seal the package. So if you are using a polyurethane bag, it should come with an uh, adhesive strip. So you wanna ensure your bag is completely sealed to prevent it from opening in transit, okay? If your packaging does not self-seal, use packing you want to use packing tape at least two inches wide and strong enough to make to contain whatever is in your parcel okay if sealing a box use the edge taping method this technique involves first sealing down the, the flaps and then the edges so the tape creates an edge pattern tip both the bottom and top seam, seams of the box and make sure the tape can adequately support any heavy items next thing you want to do is you want to consider the box in method the box in box method so after wrapping up and sealing your uh, small package, you might want to place it inside a larger box with more filler material. So while most shipping will not need this added protection, a fragile or valuable products will benefit from the extra layer. Okay, And to use this method, first prepare your inner box. Your outer box should be large enough to contain the inner box plus a 2 inch buffer of filler. Next you want to fill the case, though you want to fill the base of the outer box with filler material like uh, packing peanuts for example okay and you want to place your inner container inside and then add the rest of the filler material inside the uh, internal packaging it's so it's so once everything is done just seal up the outer box as you did the inner box let's talk about how to package large products by the way i want to quickly remind you of today's conversation we are having, we're talking about how to package and ship orders for complete beginners, whether you're doing offline sales or online sales. So let's talk about how to uh, do, for, do it for large products, okay? First, you need to find the right materials. So you need to think about a bag, envelope, or padded mailer. Those will be too small for your larger products. Instead, you will need a heavy-duty corrugated cardboard box. Look for one with uh, several layers and seams that have been stitched or stippled rather than glued. Do not reuse an old box for a bulky item since you cannot guarantee its strength. Then you want to add filler. So as with smaller products, larger items also need filler. However, when shipping heavy items, crumpled paper and lightweight cushioning will not hold up. Instead, you want to use engineered polystyrene foam shipped to house the products. Corrugated cardboard inserts can also cradle your item so as with smaller packages, aim for at least two inches of space on every side so the product will not touch the box's walls, okay? And the box met the double box method is also recommended for larger, heavier items whenever possible. Step number three, you want to seal the box. So as with a smaller box, you will need to seal the box around every edge with tape. And in this case, what you will do is you will use a few layers of heavy-duty tape 
a fiberglass reinforced water activated tape can bond to the cardboard ensuring that your box stays sealed through the entire trip okay because again especially if, if you're if you're shipping if you're shipping overseas you really want the, the box to hold right this is really important and uh the one thing i want to say here is that you want to palletize if needed because larger products often have additional shipping packaging like a pallet so a shipping pallet lets you lets your shipping carrier load and unload your product using material handling equipment such as uh, forklifts so a large palletized product might be shrink wrapped or stretch wrapped which provides cushioning during uh, transits and holds everything together so a palletized product could also be strapped down or secured in another fashion so it really depends on what what kind of uh, strategy works for you okay but either way it really works so if you want to package so what i want to say here is that just want to quickly recap here so if you have to uh, package small to medium sized products you need to choose your packaging type decide whether to customize add protective filler seal the package and consider the box in box method to package large products you want to find the right materials add filler seal the box palletize if needed okay now let's talk about how to pack your products for shipping and distributions very important so we already packaged the products now we have to pack them for sh for shipping and distributions you need to understand when we talk about when shipping products to a distributor and for placement in stores you'll need to consider different packaging requirements so if your customer is a distributor they could have requirements specific to how they operate right and you need to fulfill those those requirements so you also need to think about the industry regulations and minimum order requirements as the packager you'll pack individual products into cases based on your distributor's required weight and quantity then you will pack cases into pallets now this will not apply if you're an e-commerce seller because you're selling to uh, you're doing b2c but here if you're doing b2b you need to pay attention so your distributor will likely require specific pallet sizes and types to ensure that everything will fit their requirements they will also set a, ma a maximum pallet height so consider whether the, the uh, distributor will be keeping the products stored in their inventory and what their storage conditions are. Storage is really important. This could cost you a lot of cash, so be very careful there. You also need to understand your distribution network and how your products and outer packaging will, will, be, uh, will travel throughout the supply chain. Okay, so to actually design safe containment systems, you also, you need to think about the best way for you to uh, have the best packaging system that will go through handling, transport, and storage. Okay, so if you want to have that, think about the type and size of pallet, pallet stacking or storage configuration, specifications for maximum and minimum pallet heights and load weights. Okay, think about whether pallet stacking will be, will use slip sheets, layer sheets, or caps whether a palletized load will be secured using stretch warp, shrink warp, corner post or straps, what types of shipping containers will be used such as trays, boxes, crates or bins, the required material of properties such as moisture res resistance and brake strength, what type of protective filler is needed. So you have to really think about all these things, okay? Now considering every step in the shipping and distribution process and meeting every specification ensures that your products will be protected and arrive at their final destinations in one piece that's what you want anyway it also help will help you avoid bottlenecks in the supply chain with packaging that fits in with uh, existing warehousing and material handling methods okay very important now let's talk about shipping how do you actually ship products? By the way, I want to quickly uh, remind you of today's topic. We're having a conversation about how to package and ship orders for complete beginners, whether you're shipping offline or online, doesn't really matter. This tutorial applies to e-commerce sellers, but also non-e-commerce retailers, okay? So how do you ship products? So before you prepare your products for shipment, make sure they are packed with the right shipping container, filler, and a packing slip. So once you have decided how to pack your products for shipping, you can actually prepare you for shipment okay and the thing is the final details of your shipping preparations will actually depend on your chosen carriers shipping requirements are you going with with the uh, dhl ups usps fedex and whatnot okay in general the process will follow a few simple steps so 
if you have to ship small to medium sized items, you need to measure and weight your package. Very important. You need to calculate your shipping rates and compare carriers. Okay. And the thing is, some shipping carriers will charge you by a package dimensional weight, meaning how much space it takes up in their truck. Other carriers might use your package's dead weight. Still, others may take the larger of the two, so you want to work with your carrier or group of carriers you are considering to calculate your shipping cost. Very important. And you also will provide the dimensional and actual weight alongside the origin and destination. The third step is you want to book your carrier, right? So it's not about just uh, doing everything in theory. You have to book the carrier. And um, the last thing is you need to label and send your package. So you need to print out the shipping labels your carrier provides and attach them to your packages using clear packing tape. And attach any other labels and stickers needed to transport your items safely. So for example, you may need a special sticker if your product has a lithium battery or any hazmat materials, then you are ready to send off your shipments. One thing I also need to say here is that when we talk about measuring and weighing your package, make sure you first measure the length, width, and uh, height of your package. You want to multiply the three dimensions and divide the number by the three uh, by the dimensional cubic divisor requested by your chosen carrier. So this figure represents your package's dimensional weights, sometimes abbreviated as uh, dim weights. Okay, very important to remember that. How do you actually ship large, heavy items? Let's talk about that. So the thing is that uh, in some ways, shipping a large item is not really much different from sending a small uh, product, okay? You will actually follow the same process, but it's important to really know that there are some uh, some important elements to take into account. So it, everything starts with packaging the products. You have to measure it. You have to calculate and compare rates. You have to book your shipment. You have to finally prepare it for pickup, right? However, when working with larger packages, your carrier may impose some more requirements. So your process will actually follow these three steps. Okay. So first you need to check your oversized package requirements. The thing is that different carriers list different dimensions and weight thresholds for packages to be considered oversized. So if you go with UPS versus USPS or FedEx, they have different or DHL, they have different requirements. So some carriers call a box oversized if it weighs more than 70 pounds or another weight threshold okay others will look at the packages combined dimensions for some carriers anything over 130 inches will fit into the oversized category okay so as with uh, small packages you will need to measure and weigh your package to calculate your shipping rates very important so that so that's the first thing now what, what one thing i need to say here is that if your package is considered oversized with your chosen carrier you may need to follow special requirements for example you might be required not to reuse a corrugated box and ensure it will hold a certain weight okay so when you prepare your products for shipment you may need to add a special caution sticker indicating the package's weight so your package will receive the attention it deserves so that's the first thing first thing you want you need to check your oversized package requirements number two you need to review shipping options and rates so if your package falls into the oversized range for your chosen carrier, you will have to pay additional shipping costs. That just makes sense. You may even have to discuss special rates with your carrier for extremely large shipments that fall outside of standard oversized dimensions. So carriers who specialize in small packages will take oversized packages for an added fee. And other providers will deliver your, pa your parcel, classifying it as a freight shipment instead of a regular delivery. Okay. So to this is what it is. And the number three, you need to confirm and prepare your shipment. So when you are ready to proceed with the chosen carrier, you will book your order and follow your carrier's instructions to prepare it for pickup or drop off. So you need to print out and attach your shipping labels and any required special labeling for your oversized packaging. Then your package will be ready for the carrier. Let me just close to this conversation by explaining to you how to ship fragile items okay now if items if your items arrive broken you may have to worry about returns and potentially who knows potentially uh, bad reviews and lost customers right which you don't want anyway so that's why it's really essential to know how to pack and ship fragile items and most of the differences in your shipping approach have to do with packaging your fragile items so you want to pick the right size of box and wrap each item individually. 
you want to pack the items safely using at least three inches of cushioning as opposed to the usual two inches that I just spoke about earlier. So as you prepare your items for shipment, following or carrier requirements, make sure that you put the shipping label on the larger surface. This helps ensure that your package will stay upright during shipping, protecting its content. So adding a fragile sticker to the box can also remind personnel to handle your parcel with care, which you should have anyway. Okay, very important. So how do you actually ship fragile items? Let me just give you a step-by-step -step guide. So first you want to choose a box that's only slightly larger than the item. Okay, so you don't want to use boxes that have too much space in them, causing the content to shift around. So using a slightly a slightly bigger box than the than the product allows any remaining empty space to be filled with the dunnage to keep everything in place. You want to wrap the item in cushioning material. So if your products are not manufactured with supportive uh, packaging and are stored loose, you you really have to uh, you need to wrap them in a lot of dunnage. If necessary, encase the item in foam. Okay, for very expensive or fragile items, you may want to make a foam enclosure from the, for the package that is molded to its specific measurements. This is obviously not a very scalable solution, but it is what it is. Use air pillows or packing peanuts. Okay, if there is empty space in the box, be sure to fill the, the space with air bags, packing peanuts, or crinkle paper. You want to add a fragile label to the box. This is really important in all cases. Okay, a fragile um, sticker or label will let the shipping personnel or shipping carriers know that they, they need to handle the box with care. And you need to affix or tilt. Uh, you need to affix a tilt or impact detector. So these devices are typically used for shipments that need to remain upright and require very delicate handling. So while they are rare for parcel shipments and are very expensive. They not only let you know when the fragile item may have been damaged, but also encourage the handlers to be extra careful. So you do have a constellation of, uh, of solutions here. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I just, I just explained to you how to package and ship orders. And so we spoke about packaging and then we spoke about shipping. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll speak to you another time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.